Welcome to ADF TV. My name is Frank Nupius and I'm from the Oracle JDevelop and ADF product management team. In this session, we talk about service integration architectures in Oracle IDF. More precisely, we talk about SOAP service integration in Oracle IDF applications. The question is, why do we bother as web developers about service-oriented architecture and service integration? Well, in fact, services are no longer just used within service-oriented architecture, but for many reasons, they also find their entry into web development. One of the reasons you want to use services for is to work with multi-channel access in your application. Remember that the web is not the only access to your application. Mobile access or even access from a service-oriented architecture should not run unfiltered to your business data. It should follow the validation logic and it should also enforce the business logic. So services is perfectly made for that. Another reason to use services would be to protect data. Nobody really wants to expose their database on the internet. Nobody really wants to allow people to use direct JDBC connection to your data to insert, update or delete. Instead, you want to shield the data with some sort of API, which services is just one idea of. And last but not least, I don't know if you watched all of the ADF TV series, but if you did, then you definitely watched the ADF architecture pattern that Chris Muir presented. One of these patterns is the pillar architecture that allows you to partition an application to specific modules. Now you can use this to distribute the load among developers or development teams, but you can also use that to kind of build the application sequential. If you build this in a sequential manner, or if you just distribute the load, still there would be a requirement for one pillar to access the other one, or actually it's data from it. And you have to provide some sort of API. Again, services will help with that. So let's have a look at the service integration architecture within Oracle IDF, for at least the SOAP services. Well, we start off with a service. Now we couldn't care less how this service is built, if it's a Java service, C or a C sharp service, if it's a build SQL service, we couldn't care less. All that we really care for is the definition of the service, which we get from the WSDL file. So we access this WSDL file and this is all that we need to know about the service. On the ADF side, we do have three options to expose services to an ADF user interface model. One option on top is ADF business components. The other one is the Poetry data control and we do have a web service data control. To connect to the web service, the web service data control can connect directly to the web service definition language, WSDL file, whereas the other two options require to have a kind of a dispatcher between, which is a JAX-WS proxy client that you see here. The JAX-WS proxy client actually will access the web service and then transform the web service collections and methods that they are exposed there into Java methods. You see there's a little blank here and this little blank is there because our recommendation is to put in a, um, a wrapper class, a wrapper bean in front of the proxy. So the Java bean wrapper will instantiate the proxy client, the JWS proxy client, and then will query the data from the web service through the proxy client. The benefit of this Java wrapper up front, this is why we recommend it, is that it protects the application that you built from change. And there will be change in the web service structure. You might have new methods that you introduce on the web service or changes there. To avoid an immediate impact to your application you build, you want to have a wrapper up front. And the reason why this wrapper does not extend the JAX proxy client but just instantiates it is to also allow you to filter out methods and collections that are available in the JAX WS proxy client that you don't want to expose to the application developer. And then there is another benefit of using a wrapper class and that is that you can implement caching. Now a caching strategy implemented on the wrapper will make a lot of sense there to compare a query with data that you already have. The way you implement this caching, it's all up to you. You could use a Pojo cache or you could use coherence. Or, as we will see later, if you implement the same with an ADF business component access, you get the cache for free 
as this is the entity cache in ADF Vision components. Well, the web service data control access is fairly simple and probably doesn't need to any further explanation, does it? Probably not. So let's continue with the more advanced options, which is to expose web service data through ADF Business components and to the Project Data Control. Both options will access the web service through the Juxta OBS proxy client and will access it through a wrapper bean as per our recommendation. If you use ADF Business components and you want to use ADF Business components to expose web services, which makes sense to provide a consistent API to the application developer if the overall model is ADF Business component, then you will have to make one decision up front, which is do you need to read from the web service or do you also want to update the web service or even create new rows or records within the web service. Now in the latter case, in addition to a view object, you will also have to create a custom entity object representing the rows that are returned from the web service query. The ADF Business Components framework by its definition is a SQL framework. So that means that to make it work with the web service, you will have to remove the core of the framework in that you have to translate SQL queries as they come from the client into equivalent web service calls. Once you override specific methods I will introduce on the next slide, then you can expose the view object on the application module in the data model as you would expect to do it if it was a SQL-based view object. So let's have a look at the methods that you need to deal with. There are two methods on the entity object that you need to override and the do DML is the most important one because the do DML here will determine the translation from an insert operation requested by a client or an update request or a delete request to the web service call. We do document this by example of a pure SQL procedure in the Fusion Developer Guide, which is the official product documentation. And I just ask you to look into this example and then um, translate the pure SQL example that we documented to your web service call. On the view object side, the create method is something you need to override if you perform insert behavior on a web service based ADF business components model because this will create a new empty row, adds it to the view object collection. Execute query for collection is called whenever there's a query executed on the iterator, on the ADF binding. So you need to override this method to call out to the web service to fetch the data as queried. And it will give you all sort of information within it. For instance, bind variables used and then you can see if you can filter the query coming from the web service. It's all a matter of if the web service supports query or filtering. If it does, then using bind variables in view object is an option and maybe makes sense to avoid the penalty of large row sets being queried from a web service and always keep in mind it's an XML payload that you will get in the SOAP case. Create row from result set then is called for each of the rows for you to create the entity, the custom entity object for the query data. Query hit count, this is what you know as estimated row count on the iterator to tell whether or not there is data in the iterator and if there is data, how many data there is in there. Has next for collection allows the framework to determine whether or not buttons, for instance, in the navigation bar need to be disabled or enabled if these buttons are next buttons or next set buttons. Again, have a look at the documentation and you will find a coding hint and coding information for how to do this for PL SQL access. And then it's exactly the same just with web service access. Working with the POJO data control is almost the same as with the ADF Business Components. The only difference here is that instead of having ADF Business Components as the front layer, we now use the wrapper bean directly. So every method that is exposed on the wrapper bean actually will be displayed on the POJO data control, which means that every method will be in the um, data control panel, every collection will be exposed there and the attributes as well. As of 
JDeveloper 11G Release 2 and in 12C, we provide a new POJO data control, which is called the sparse bean data control. Still, you will refer to it as Java bean data control or the POJO data control. The benefit or the advantage you get here is that this POJO data control then is a lot closer to what ADF Business Components provides in that it has named criteria for you to create sort of declarative where clauses and it has the ability to define model-driven <coughs> list of values. So you want to have a look into this. And I'm saying this because in the past, customers chose ADF Business Components even in cases where they didn't need to only because of model-driven list of values and read criteria. So now this is available for project data control as well. So you can now completely make up your mind and make up the decision based on your business requirements and needs. So what are the best practices for implementing the web service access? So first of all, when we talk about SOAP services, which we do in this session, then the web service data control obviously only is capable of handling very simple services. So that could be kind of weather reports or stock quotes. When it comes to more complex cases, like where we have um, complex payloads, then typically we recommend that you use the Jux WS proxy client because that gives you more control in the dispatching between the client request to the web service. Programmatic view objects and entities um, are needed if your business service is based on ADF business components and if you want to have a full CRUD operation working here. The motivation for you to use ADF business components to expose web services surely is that if the overall business model that you have is based on ADF business components. We've seen customers in the past that also used ADF business components, though their business model wasn't ADF business components. And I think this really overcomplicated their case and their development efforts there. So you want to really make sure that the decision for which of the implementation technologies for the business service you use in ADF really makes sense to your working habits and to your um, application development audience. Therefore, the Jux WS proxy clients um, would be used for the with the POJO data control for any cases that are not ADF business components. Well, uh, exceptions will um, justify to use ADFBC, but actually this is where I think the answer that we can give in this training is it depends and it really depends on your requirement and use case what you want to do. If for instance the whole architecture you have and the whole model you have is POJO based, if you use EGB for your persistent layer or if you use um, SOA artifacts, if you directly talk within a SOA infrastructure then maybe the POJO data control is more convenient for you to use and to be honest it's less override to do because you have a straight and plain access to the web service. You don't have to override any framework behavior here. So let's the business rule. So make sure that you understand what is best for you and what is easiest for your application developers to implement. If all your data sources are juxtaposed services, avoid a POJO data control approach. So if you're in a SOA infrastructure, most likely ADF business components doesn't make sense as a client. Implement strategy to ensure that data queried from web service sources are locally cached. So that's still something that you should keep in consideration. And here clearly ADF business components has an advantage in that ADF business components provides the caching through its entity cache. Well, this concludes the integration architecture overview of the SOAP service integration and we have the next recording lining up for the same with RESTful services. So what you should take away from this session is there are three options to access web services and I introduced them all and that there are two powerful options with this POJO data control and ADF business components as a client to the web service through the Duxo-US proxy client because they put you into control and there's one very simple approach, which is a web service data control, which is for convenient use. So if you have some easy to use and simple services, then using the web service data control is the most declarative and most um, productive approach in querying the web service.